Good morning, Giselle. And so important, you mentioned those statistics. We know that this time of year could be so magical, but sadly, we do see that fires can happen from some of the things that we love most about this time of year, the decorations and the Christmas trees. I want to show you a video because I want you to just get a sense of how quickly a dry Christmas tree can actually go up in flames. This is video from the National Fire Protection Agency, and in a matter of seconds, the fire gets out of control. So you want to ensure to keep Keep your tree watered so it doesn't become a fire hazard and you and your family can stay safe. So to talk about all of the different fire hazards and how to stay safe this holiday season, I want to welcome Chief May here of Redondo Beach. We also have Engineer Joe. We'll talk to him in a second about some different fire safety hazards. So Chief May, what do we need to know about the big one, the Christmas tree? Good morning, everybody. The Redondo Beach Fire Department is very excited to share some home safety tips with you as the holidays approach. With your Christmas tree, we have three things we want, really want to look at in terms of your Christmas tree. The first is when you bring your tree home, you want to make sure you're placing it in a location that's at least three feet away from all heating sources. That includes candles, fireplaces, space heaters, and one that kind of gets commonly overlooked is floor vents for heating systems in houses. You know, we're lucky to live here in Southern California. Typically, we aren't using our heaters until this time of year, so those floor vents get overlooked being placed too close to the Christmas tree. So making sure, again, your tree is at least three feet away from all heating sources inside your house. The second one is, as your tree is in your home during your Christmas holidays, you want to make sure it stays nice and watered. And you want to make sure that somebody specifically in your house is watering it on a frequent basis, checking the water underneath the tree itself, um, and then also checking your needles, making sure they're not coming off and the tree hasn't dried out and then is a big fire hazard inside your house. The last nugget I'll leave you with as we finish out our holidays and Christmas comes and goes, we want to make sure we dispose of our Christmas tree kind of by New Year's because, um, again, the tree dries out over a period of time. Even if you're watering it, it's away from those heating sources, and it can present a significant fire hazard inside your home. So making sure we're getting rid of it as the holidays close out. Chief May, I got two questions for you. First of all, if you do go get your tree and you come home and you notice that the, the needles are falling off, should you bring it back? What should you do? Uh, for that type of tree, you definitely probably should take it back to wherever you got it from and get a live tree because we want to make sure that that tree is absorbing water that you're putting on it on a frequent basis. And then when it is time to dispose of a tree, how, what do we do with them? Do we just throw them on the, the side of the road? So each city is different. Each waste management system is a little different, but your city's website should have information about how to properly dispose of your tree and hopefully recycle it. United States goes through about 25 to 30 million Christmas trees each holiday season, and those trees can be recycled into paper or other useful purposes after the holidays close out. Great. That's an awesome message. And obviously, it's not just the Christmas trees that pose a hazard. This is Engineer Bohm, who's going to talk about some other stuff. What else do we need to know about when it comes to fire safety hazards in the home? Well, Sarah, first and foremost, the thing that's paramount for us in the fire service is the safety of our community, and that's throughout all you know the, throughout the whole year. So, especially with this holiday season, some of the things that we want to focus on uh, as we're getting ready to decorate uh, is electrical. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about our Christmas lights. Yeah, let's take a look at at some of these so people know. Um, here's your Christmas lights. Here, what yep. should we sort of check for? So as we're pulling out those dusty bins and decorating our houses, uh, one thing that we recommend is that people take the time to inspect the cordage of the lights. And what we're looking for, if there's any frays or any pinch points in the lights, because some people like to staple them to the house, um, they might get damaged. Uh, we want to make sure that if you find anything along those lines, that you want to discard those lights because that can cause a shortage or sparking and thus cause a, a fire hazard. Another thing with the Christmas lights we would like to recommend is that to follow the manufacturer's guidelines on how many light strands you can connect into each other. Um, if you are going to connect multiple light strands, we recommend that you use this guy right here, what we call a power strip. Uh, this gives multiple outlets or multiple plugs uh, plugged into one power source safely. Uh, the most important thing with this feature is the GFI or ground fault interrupter. Uh, what that does is if it senses an overload in the circuit or if there is any type of electrical short, it immediately de-energizes the power source, thus eliminating hopefully the, the fire hazard there. So. I'm glad you went over that because I just have images of Christmas Vacation, that movie, where they're like plugging all the different lights into like the same socket. So really important to remember to get that power strip and to check your lights. Absolutely. You want to have a butte, Clark. So. <laughs> I like that. Okay. What else we got? Uh, moving on to candles. Uh, 
This is the, their time to shine, no pun intended. But uh, what we would recommend, uh, first and foremost, with candles is to use battery-operated candles. Uh, with the technology nowadays, uh, they still have that same feel, that, that flickering look and feel to the holiday season. Um, that would also eliminate any type of fire hazard uh, utilizing the battery. If you are going to utilize real candles, uh, a couple recommendations is to have a sturdy candle holder. You want to have at least 12 inches of clearance from any flammable objects. And lastly, you want to have them placed in a house where they're going to be uh, seen and not easily knocked over. So that's what we would say with the candles. How, how often do candles actually spark fires, do you know? So about half of all fires, household fires, uh, in December due to decor are from candles. So this is a very important aspect of uh, keeping the house safe uh, during this holiday season. All right, you heard it there. Okay, what else you got for us? Uh, another thing is uh, our smoke detectors and carbon monoxide alarms. Uh, we always recommend that you check the batteries uh, when we spring forward and fall back. Um, and then to run a test on those, which you can press the button. They're very uh, easily um, readable and uh, easy to follow instructions as far as that goes with the uh, smoke okay. detector carbon monoxide. Okay. And uh, so we know that this time of year, Giselle, that, you know, we're just turning on our heaters for the first time. So really important to check the batteries and the carbon monoxide uh, in, those, in those alarms. I'm going to send it back to you. Yeah.